Good morning everybody and once again welcome to the video. This video I'm going to be talking about AWS step function in detail. Uh, what do I mean by that? I'm starting a brand new series where I'll be walking you over the step function, the stateless language of the step function. We'll use workflow. We'll see some of the best architectures uh, for, for example like Taco Bell how they essentially take orders using AWS step functions, right? And SQS, right? So we're gonna learn all about that, right? But this video is a getting started video where we learn theory, we, we read definition, and then we have hands-on session uh, in the next upcoming video. So this is gonna be a series, all right? So let's get started without wasting uh, any, any further time. So yeah, you'll have an ability or an opportunity to learn, you know, um, the, the, the workflow, we'll write stateless language on step functions, we'll do some uh, pre-processing uh, as well, right? But let's get started with the step function, right? Um, so for people who are watching me for the first time, hey everyone, my name is Saumil. I, I completed my bachelor's uh, back in India in electronic engineering and I uh, recently completed my double master's in electrical and computer engineering. Um, this video, I'll be talking about step function and following articles have been taken from it, their official website. Um, so AWS step function is a serverless function orchestrator that makes it easy to sequence uh, AWS Lambda function and multiple AWS services uh, into business critical application. Um, through its visual interface, you can create, run a series of checkpoint and event driven workflows that maintains application state the output of one step act as an input to the next step. Each step in your application executes uh, in, order, uh, in, in, in order as defined by your business logic. So essentially think about use case where you wanna uh, develop serverless application using Lambda, right? You can do Lambda chaining, which means uh, output of one Lambda will be firing the, the next Lambda, but all that error handling, and it's just too tedious to do all that. So, which is why AWS introduced step functions, right? To do that. Um, uh, orchestrating a series of individual serverless application, managing retries and debugging failures can be challenging. As your distributed application becomes more complex, the complexity of man managing them also grows. With the built-in operational control step function manages sequencing, error handling, retry logic and state removing a significant operational burden into your team. So. Uh, it essentially the benefits are uh, build and update apps quickly, improve resiliency, writing less code, right? Um, so this is the link where Amazon uh, essentially uh, uh, says that it's, uh, it's, a, it's a stateless language, right? So they have, you know, all the detail on how to write stuff, right? So, but remember, I'll, I'm gonna teach you the hard way first and then the easy way. There is a workflow where you can drag and drop but we need to learn the state language too, okay? It's important for us to learn because not everything you might be able to do on the workflow. Uh, syntax, uh, so uh, very easy. Uh, I'll try my best to explain. Um, so as you can see, every, uh, it's essentially the language starts with a dictionary. Uh, every item has to have a comment, start at and the states item, okay? Comment is essentially you comment out and say what your state function is doing. Start at, where do you wanna start? Remember each uh, state is a lambda, SQS, whatever you wanna define. So in this case, I'm saying type as task, resource, I'm providing the ARN of that lambda, end is equal to true. On my right hand side is an image that will be shown to you when you write uh, uh, something like this, okay? So the very easy, hello world, right? Uh, this is essentially uh, an example explaining about all those points that I just said. A state machine must have a simple object field called states. So yada yada yada, right? So these are the fields that it must have. The states are represented as field and the top level a states object. The state names whose length must be less than equal to 128 Unicode character. This is important. You can't have a paragraph long name, right? So it's important to know uh, these stuff, right? So moving on. Uh, transition link uh, between states uh, defining the control flow for state machine. After executing a non-terminal uh, non -terminal state, the interpreter follows a transition into the next state. Essentially, layman language is trying to say that once one lambda is done, or whatever if you're using lambda, once, uh, once transition is done, then it would move to the next transition. That is exactly what it's trying to say. Uh, these all we can uh, exclude it. I don't think I, I need to really cover this, but uh, I do want to cover uh, something called paths here. 
So say you have a uh, JSON data which you see on the left hand side, foo, one, two, three, bar as an array, car as an, a hash map. If you want to do branching based on condition, right? So for example, if the value of foo is uh, greater than one, two, uh, let's say if it's greater than 100, I want to do a branch to a new state, else I want to do a branch to a next state. So the way you access items in the dictionary is using a dollar operator. So if you say dollar dot foo, this will give you the value one, two, three. Similarly, dollar dot bar will give you an array, dollar dot car dot cdr will give you the value of true. Very important to know, right? Uh, some more examples for you that I have taken. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, oh, let me try my best to first of all, uh, make this down, yeah. So now this is a very good example, you know, where uh, as you can see that you have a state called x, right? And then uh, let me see if I can take a pen here. That would be really nice. Can I draw? Uh, doesn't allow me. Yeah, so some, I can't draw here for some reason, not sure why, but uh, maybe I'll figure out, oh, yeah, I think I have to be in the presentation mode and I'm, I'm currently not in the presentation mode, that's fine. Um, so as you can see here, right? Oh, it, it works. So type as task, resource, this is a Lambda function next to Y, which means after this is done, go to a state called Y, okay? Then you're saying parameter um, flag does true parts. So first dot dollar, last dot uh, dollar. So first dot dollar, um, as you can see, uh, parts, then you have first dot dollar, dollar dot vals is equal to zero. So uh, this is essentially showing you how you would, uh, you know, access the value, right? Uh, similarly, when you say last, uh, last um, three dot dollar, which means you have access to this array. Now, what he's showing you here is you can also slice an array. They have an ability to do that, right? For example, here you have a Tuesday as a string. You can also do conditions such as dollar, dollar, day of the, which day of the week is that, right? So all that stuff you could do. You could um, also work with daytime objects. And this is just showing, showing you the tip of the iceberg, okay? So if I scroll up here, um, as you can see, stage.format today is equal to, there's a placeholder, dollar, dollar, day of the week. So it's gonna format that, right? So you could do all that stuff and then you could branch based on your um, um, items that you have in the input, right? Uh, errors, uh, very important uh, about errors, right? How do you manage errors? So in Lambda, you know, when a Lambda fails, you say, hey, I wanna retry my Lambda after X amount of time. All that, do you do that now in a JSON format. So for example, now you say retry, then you say error handling equals to state or timeout. So for example, if a Lambda timeout, uh, interval as three, maximum at time as two, back off as 1.5. So I'll try after 1.5, uh, you know, so you could define everything as a, oh, sorry, sorry, I think I changed it. Yeah, so you could define everything as a JSON. It's very, very intuitive, right? Uh, remember, I have labs in the next tutorial. This is essentially just a walkthrough. Okay, so please, uh, all right. Uh, some more complex error, uh, for example, you can say retry, error equals to states.timeout. You know you could do that, or you could say, uh, you could write a general exception like, hey, anything in general failed, do something, go to a new state, right? So you could do that. A complex error scenario, that's also possible, I would say. So here you can see, you can have a try catch also. So for example, type task, resource, blah, blah, blah. You're saying, hey, uh, if error is equal to error A or error B, so you're checking for specific error, then, you know, set up an interval, do a back off, right? Uh, if error is equal to C, you can do that. If nothing happens and if in general there's an error, so states dot all, go to Z. And in Z you could do whatever you want, right? So you could do complex uh, error handling here, okay? I, I really have a lot more uh, to offer here in the step functions, right? Uh, as I said, this was the part one. Part two, I'll be going deep and deep hands-on. We'll create state machine, we'll learn branching, we'll learn for loop, we'll do batch processing. We'll make an async architecture like Taco Bell and a lot, lot more. Stay tuned for upcoming videos and parts. Thank you so much for watching.